basic, fundamental, primary role of a biblical elder is the director or the guardian of true and right doctrine. of the church is undoubtedly, unequivocally, Jesus Christ is the head of the church. The scriptures say this to us plainly. He's not only is the head of the church, as Paul says in the Ephesians, he's the head of all things. That even as he says to Peter in Matthew 18, I, I say you are Peter and upon this rock I will build my church. He is the head of the church. But how does the head of the church mediate his authority to the church. How does the, how does the body know what the head tells them, leads them, commands them, encourages them to do? How does the head mediate his authority to the body? The scriptures say to us that Jesus mediates his authority to his body through the words of the apostles and the close associates of the apostles. We see in the scriptures, for example, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, if anybody does not, this is Paul speaking to the church in Thessalonica, if anybody does not obey what we say in this letter, take note of that person and have nothing to do with him that he may be ashamed. So clearly Paul says, what I say in this letter is to be obeyed. I take that to be a direct representation of the authority of Jesus mediated to the church in Thessalonica by means of Paul's words to them. Second, uh, 1 Corinthians 14, if anyone thinks that he is a prophet or spiritual, he should acknowledge that the things I, Paul, am writing to you are a command of the Lord. If anyone does not recognize this, he is not recognized. If anyone who is part of the body in Corinth doesn't recognize the authority of what Paul says, Paul is implying here he either repents or he's put out of the church. Do not recognize him. If you do not recognize the authority of Paul, then how can you be a follower of Christ and part of his bride? Or 1 Corinthians 7, only let the, each person lead the life that the Lord has assigned him and to which God has called him, this is my rule in all the churches. And by my, I take that to mean ultimately Jesus' rule as Paul is the voice of Jesus in in this context. So Jesus mediates his authority, his leadership to the churches by means of the words of the apostles and the associates of the apostles who wrote, what we refer to as the New Testament. However, all those men who wrote those things are long dead, and they cannot come to us and say to us, look, look, here's what I really meant in Romans 9. You're kind of getting it wrong. Here's what I meant. They're not here to do that. So here we see the basic, fundamental, primary role of a biblical elder is, as I put it here, the director or the guardian of true and right doctrine in such a way that Jesus now mediates his authority to the church through the words of the apostles. And those words are guarded, or if you want to use the word doctrine, that word, that doctrine, those words are guarded by the biblical elder. That's the primary, central, fundamental, foundational role of the biblical elder. Look at what Paul says to Titus in Titus 1 verse 9. He, meaning an elder, must hold firmly to the trustworthy word as taught so that he may be able to give instruction in sound doctrine and also to rebuke those who contradict it. So here's Paul saying to Titus, here is the central thing an elder must be able to do. Hold fast to the word as it is taught. And to do that, you have to understand it. You have to be gifted by God with an understanding of His doctrine, of His Word, as taught so that you can 
teach others in sound doctrine, but also rebuke those who are getting doctrine wrong in the church. And so the elder is serving this shepherding sort of watchdog role. You know how shepherds would do a lot of things, but one of the things that they would do is they'd protect the sheep against the wolves. So the, the elder is serving this sort of protecting watchdog kind of role to guard true and right doctrine within the body so that the body does not go astray in its understanding and its teaching and its receiving and its living out of the authority of Christ as mediated to them through the words of the apostles and the apostles' associates. Okay? So that is where we begin. Christ is the head. He mediates his authority through the words of the New Testament. And elders are men called by God to be knowledgeable about the New Testament and to hold firmly to right and true doctrine and to be that rudder of a ship. You know how a ship's rudder keeps it on course. That's the biblical elders. The biblical elders are like the, the, the doctrinal rud, rudder of a ship to keep that ship on course. And that course being, of course, the course. I said course three times right there. That course being the course of the New Testament teaching. Okay? So let's now endeavor to understand biblical eldership. So understanding biblical eldership begins by understanding the three terms in the scriptures that can relate to what we are referring to as a biblical elder. And so you see those in your uh, notes here, elder, overseer, and pastor. And I've got here for you the Greek spelling and the English transliteration. I put that in there so everybody will know just how smart I am. So uh, elders, overseers, and pastors are the three terms in Scripture that refer to the office. Now, by the way, pastor, that word, shows up all over the place in the New Testament as a verb. To pastor as a verb or to shepherd. It's often translated shepherd, sometimes to care for. So it shows up all over the place in the New Testament as a verb. Only rarely, in fact, only one time does it show up as a noun, meaning a pastor. And that's in Ephesians 4, and that section in Ephesians 4 where Paul is really delineating sort of the makeup of the church. And he says, to the church are given pastors, teachers, right? That's the only place in the New Testament where that word shows up as a noun. So the word pastor is really sort of an outlier. The two main words are elder, translated elder, and translated overseer. Presbyteros and episkopos. So presbyteros, we see in that, Presbyterian. And probably some of us know some Presbyterians, and they're all about elders, right? But we also see episkopos, right? And that word translated, usually translated overseer. You can hear in that word episkopos, you can hear a scope to see. You know, like microscope, telescope. And epi, which means over, like epidurus is, or epidermis is your outer over skin. So over see. Sometimes it's translated bishop. Right? And then we think, okay, that's, that makes sense for the Episcopal. They have these bishops, which I don't believe are biblical, but they're sort of known for that. So you see that in the word overseer, some, again, sometimes translated bishop, and elder. So the first thing to understand is all three of those words are undoubtedly referring to the same biblical office, but they are addressing different aspects of the office. So depending on the context, the word used may be a word that more emphasizes the eldership, meaning the spiritual maturity, or the word may be overseer, emphasizing the authority or the, the governing aspect of it. Sometimes pastoring or shepherding or caring for may be used to emphasize the compassion and the, the love and the care for the body. But those three words are all referring to the same office, the same biblical office from a different aspect or from a different perspective. I can clearly show that to you by looking at just three passages from, first of all, Acts 20, a little bit earlier in the passage that we read from earlier, from verse 17. Now from Miletus, Paul sent to Ephesus and called for the elders, elders of the church to come to him. Now, <clears throat> This is Paul speaking. He says, pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to care for 
the church of God. So there's all three words there. Clearly, Paul is speaking to the same people. Luke is talking about the same group of people throughout the whole passage. Paul didn't switch groups. He wasn't talking to elders over here and says, okay, let me talk to overseers over here. He's talking to the same group of people and all three words are used to address or to refer to the same people, elders, overseers, and then the verb form of pastor, care for or shepherd the people. Titus 1, verses 5 and 7, this is why I left you, Titus, in Crete, so that you might put, to re- put what remained in order and appoint elders in every town as I directed you. Now, skipping to verse 7, for an overseer, as God's steward, must be above reproach. And then comes some qualifications. So clearly Paul is talking to Titus and he says, this is why I left you there to appoint elders. Now, overseers have these requirements. So clearly Paul didn't shift thoughts mid-sentence there. He's still talking about the same people. He calls them elders, then he calls them overseers. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 5, So I exhort the elders among you as a fellow elder and a witness to the sufferings of Christ as well as a partaker in the glory that is going to be revealed. Here's the other word, shepherd, the flock of God that is among you, exercising, and there it is, oversight, not under compulsion, willingly uh, and gladly, etc., etc. So there's, again, the same three words. Peter is speaking to the same group of people addressing the same sorts of things. So we begin by seeing, okay, we're going to see these three words, and they describe different aspects of office, different perspectives of the office, different duties of the office. But we're not talking about multiple offices. We're talking about the single office of elder, which, by the way, again, thinking back to our context in my history, this was always said to me, you know, when I want to come to the scriptures where, where there's an elder or qualifications for an elder, uh, what was said to me was, oh, that means pastor and move on, right? When you see elder, that means pastor. Now let's keep on going. But we need to delve a little bit further in there and we need to understand, does it truly mean pastor in the sense that many, probably most of us in our past experience understand that word to mean? So the question then is biblical spiritual leadership. Is it a one man operation or is it a multiple man operation? Is it a plurality? That's that's a good word to use. Is it a plurality or is it a one man job? Look at first at Titus 1, verse 5. We read this a little bit earlier. These are Paul's instructions to Titus. He says, to Titus, this is why I left you in Crete. Titus was a Cretan. And Titus is also a pastor, a leader. Paul says to him, this is why I left you in Crete, so that you might put what remained in order and appoint elders in every town that I directed you. So listen to the feel of that. Do you get the sense here that something is very much incomplete? Paul says, this is why I left you here, because there's some business that's left to be done. We've got these new churches there on the island of Crete, and they are formed, they are started, but there's some business that I didn't complete when I'm there, and this is a first order for you. So do you get the feel here that what Paul's saying is this was lacking, and we need to address this right away? And the business that was lacking, Paul then says, to appoint elders. So you get that feel that Paul's saying, yes, we have churches on the island of Crete. Wonderful. Praise God. But here's kind of what we've got to do. We we have to appoint elders in order for these churches to move forward. I, I get that distinct sense there that Paul's saying there's something lacking. There's something missing. We've sort of got the roots of it. It's out, off the ground. It started. But... Here is, an, here is a matter of high importance. We need to have elders appointed in each of these churches. So now let's look at sort of the New Testament witness of New Testament churches. And I want to show us how, without exception, without exception, every single New Testament church was led by a plurality of elders as the spiritual leaders of that church. Not a single New Testament church, not a single New Testament church, had a single man as a spiritual leader as a permanent condition. We just heard Paul say to Titus, listen, we need to appoint elders, but I'm speaking of the ongoing leadership. There's not a single New Testament church that was led by one spiritual leader. So let's take a look, first of all, at the church in Jerusalem. There's one church in Jerusalem. We see it show up multiple times in Acts 15. 
Paul and Barnabas and some of the others were appointed to go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and the elders about this particular question. When they came to Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church and the apostles and the elders. And they declared all that God had done with them, the apostles and the elders, etc., etc. Okay, all those words, all, every time elder shows up, it's in the plural. There's one church in Jerusalem. And each time, Luke says, elders, plural. The passage from James chapter 5, James is writing to the churches in an area known as, or churches known as the Jewish diaspora. What that basically means are Hebrew or, or Aramaic speaking Jews who had become scattered and now lived outside the promised land, but still retained their Jewish culture and their Jewish heritage. There's these pockets of Jewish culture, Alexandria, uh, Egypt, I almost said Virginia. Alexandria, Egypt, for example, had a large Jewish population that remained Jewish in culture, although they weren't in Israel. So the Jewish diaspora, these are the churches that James is writing to. He says, is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church. Notice elders is plural, church is singular. He's not talking to people that are members of three different churches. And he doesn't say to them, talk to the single elder for all three of the churches you're part of. That would be ridiculous. He's talking to people who are members of one church and he says to them, if they're sick, then talk to the elders of that church. Or Acts chapter 14, uh, every single church that Paul planted, we can see had a multitude or, or a plurality of elders as leaders. When they had appointed elders for them in every church, again, elders, plural, church, singular. Acts chapter 20, we see explicitly the church in Ephesus from Miletus, he sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church to come to him. There's one church in Ephesus. There's not a church on the east side and a church on the west side. There's not a church that likes contemporary music and another church that likes more traditional Jewish music. There's one Ephesian church. And that Ephesian church, Paul sent to them and said, I want to meet with the elders, plural, of that single church. Or Philippians 1, verse 1, again, there's one church in Philippi, but Paul says to all the saints in Christ Jesus who are at Philippi, along with the overseers and deacons. Titus 1, verse 5, this is speaking to all the churches in Crete. Uh, again, we said earlier, Titus is charged to point, appoint elders in every one. 1 Peter 5, verse 1, this is all the churches in Asia Minor. I exhort the elders among you as a fellow elder. Acts chapter 11, this is speaking of the church in Antioch. Again, there's one church in Antioch. So he brought him to Antioch. In Antioch, the disciples were first called Christians, and they did so sending it to the elders by the hand of Barnabas and Paul. So one church in Antioch, multiple elders in Antioch. 1 Thessalonians 5, this is speaking to the church in Thessalonica. Now the specific word is not used here, but clearly this is what's implied. We ask you, brothers, to respect those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and esteem you very highly for, uh, in love for their work. Okay, so the word's not there. Elder or overseer's not there. But clearly, that's what he's talking about. Leaders that are over them in the Lord speaking in spiritual matters. Or Hebrews 13, verse 17. This is speaking of the church in Rome. Again, here the author does not use one of those words, but clearly this idea is present. Obey your leaders. There's one church in Rome, but there's leaders and submit to them for their keeping watch over your souls. So clearly, those leaders are not just in charge of the budget. They're in charge of souls. They are exercising spiritual direction and spiritual leadership, and they're referred to in the plural. So without a doubt, I, I don't know of a single biblical scholar that would say to us that the New Testament testimony is not crystal clear that New Testament churches were led by a plurality of spiritual leaders. That's beyond question. The only time that those words elder or overseer show up in the New Testament in the singular is when it's an occasion where they're talking about one elder. Like, for example, when John calls himself an elder or Peter here calls himself an elder or when Paul writes to Timothy and says, these are the qualifications for an elder, right? So clearly that's the context of talking about one, one elder, but every other time that, the, that those words show up, they're always in the plural. So clearly, I mean, it's, it's, uh, you could not make a case that the New Testament church was not led by a plurality of spiritual leaders.